Hello everyone. I saw that there was a lot of support for my previous video talking about Invenius Hunter and all the synergies that the rune has. I saw some comments asking me to go a little more in depth with where this rune can be applied. So if you haven't watched that video, I will add a card here and I'll include it in the description of this video. From that video, we can see that there's a lot of different items that benefit from item haste, but the number of options between the different types of champions that would use them isn't exactly equal. Some champion classes will benefit much more than others. So let's talk about all the classes that will gain a lot of value from taking this rune. But first, I wanted to share that I've really been enjoying making this guide slash theory crafting content for all of you, and I would like to continue to do so. If you want to see more of this, please uh, show your support by liking, commenting, subscribing. Another thing is, I want to explain how the numbers for haste work in general. Haste is designed in a way where the amount of haste you have becomes the percent more uptime you have on your thing. So 100 ability haste means 100% up more uptime on your abilities, or in other words, it's 50% CDR. Item haste works the same way, but it's harder to come by. What really matters is whether you would be able to proc or do something in situations where you otherwise wouldn't. Now let's talk about the champions. I think it's best to start with one that might be the most fresh in people's minds, and that is tanks. There aren't that many items that are affected, but the ones that do can be absolutely insane with this rune. The items to look at here are Fimblewinter, Heartsteel, Randuins, Iceburn Gauntlet, Unending Despair, and a couple others. You may have seen the Korean Volleybear build brought to the public by Lol Dobby, which involves Fimblewinter, Unending Despair, and Spirit Visage. Volibear is a great user of these items because he has a lot of sticking power in his kit to proc Fimble Winter and remain in range for Unending Despair, as well as a lot of innate healing and shielding that will be boosted by Spirit Visage in addition to the procs of those items. Similar strategies can be run on other champions like Scion, Shen, New Skarner, Tank Gragas, Udyr, Window, Zack, Kasante. There's probably more. There's a lot of other items to work with here besides those three, considering a lot of these champions are going to build the items they do anyway. So if we look at Tom Kenge, for instance, we have a, a big heart steel buyer. It's quite rare that the most popular first item is also the highest win rate, but that's the case here. So we're pretty committed to the heart steel buy. Looking at the other commonly built items, we have Sunfire or Huddle Radiance, which helps with the wave clear problem. But you also see Unending Despair and Spirit Visage, both of the very high win rates, regardless of what item slot you buy them in. Which is enough to make me think that Ingenious Hunter would be really good here. From the stats, we can already see that this rune performs decently on him. However, we can also see that statistically there are better options, with better play rates and better win rates. My point here isn't to argue whether these options are bad, but rather that Ingenious Hunter can also be considered a viable option. For reference, Volibear statistically also has better options, but many would agree that the Ingenious build is certainly very good. Now let's talk about Bruiser items, as the other worst defenders exist here. Sunder, Sky, and Eclipse are already a disgusting combo run by a lot of different champions, but people are just now realizing that they can get even stronger. There's a particular Jarvan build popularized by King Nidhogg involving this combo along with Fimble Winter, which can also be easily procced in the setup. It also provides another shield for Shield Batch, which he, he takes in the setup. The ideal situation is to be able to engage onto your opponent, procking the items instantly, and then stalling long enough to go for a second proc of Sundered Sky and Eclipse as you try to disengage. Getting a second proc of each can be another 200 health difference between you and your opponent, which can mean a lot early on and is a reliable thing to go for with a reduced cooldown on the items. This build provides a lot of damage, but also has a lot of pseudo tankiness with your healing and shielding being buffed from the items. There are a lot of other champions that can abuse this combo in some way. Uh, Lee Sin, Poppy, Vi, Wukong, or Riven they can all abuse the Eclipse Thunder Sky combo, and then some can also use Fimple Winter. But among the Bruiser items, we also have a lot of other things to work with. Triforce has tech with how you can weave autos between abilities, as the item haste will affect the timing, so you can do more damage if you do things optimally, but I can go into more detail on that another time. Items like Sterax, Maw, GA might be available at times where they otherwise might not be, and can swing fights if you have extra tankiness when you shouldn't. 
And then you also have the Hydra items, which can be used more often for better wave and jungle clearing, and can also be used more often in team fights. Let's take a look at another example, Xin Zhao. He most often builds Titanic into Sundered Sky, but looking at what pros build, they really like the Sundered Sky Eclipse combo, which is understandable. Either way, taking Ingenious Hunter seems pretty good here, as their core builds all benefit from it. For runes, he usually goes Conquer and Inspiration Secondary, which is a uh, standard for many junglers because Cosmic Insight grants Summoner Spell Haste and Conquer is just a generically good combat keystone. If Cosmic Insight seems too valuable to give up Inspiration Secondary, which might be the opinion of some junglers, then you can also run Domination Primary. Hill of Blades is already a decent keystone on Zen and similar junglers, providing more burst, while the extra procs you get from item haste will more than make up for the loss of consistent damage from Conqueror. At level 1, you already have 30 haste on items with Ingenious and Cosmic Insight, meaning your team at clear is faster and your combat power after your first item is already a lot higher than it would be normally. For reference, 30 haste is about 23% item cooldown reduction, which means your team at will go to a little bit less than 8 seconds of cooldown. With practice using the rune, this can create a lot of really disgusting setups. Let's take a look at AD Assassin items. Here we have champions that already tend to run Domination Primary, so I want to talk about why Ingenious Hunter should be considered over the others. Excluding previously mentioned items, AD Assassins have Profane Hydra, Edge of Night, Yomu's, Opportunity, and Umbral Glaive. As you may have noticed, once again, these items could realistically already just be a build for a lot of different champions. Now, the champion example we'll be looking at now is Aatrox because he has the option to go Bruiser, which I already described before, but he also more commonly goes with AD Assassin items. In this Assassin route, he typically goes Profane Hydra into maybe Edge of Night. The way this one works is a bit more nuanced because Profane Hydra is more often a combo ender rather than a combo starter, meaning you're going to use it at the very end because you want to try to get the execute damage. So its cooldown is a lot longer than it actually seems because it starts ticking down at the end of your trade rather than at the beginning. However, you can still benefit from item haste if you skew the way you use the item a little bit. If you're willing to trade more aggressively and use it at the beginning of trades, you will have it more up and you will be able to trade more often. If you're patient with your Q activations, item haste will allow you to potentially use it both at the beginning and then also at the end of your combo, similar to how you would double proc like the, the bruiser items. With more stacks of Genius Hunter, this becomes a lot more lenient. You don't have to wait as long to be able to do this. The other items and other champions that you will use them have, like, it's more generic benefits. Edge of Night has more uptime. Yomu's has lower cooldown, so you can move around the map faster. Opportunity uh, allows you to go in and out of combat better. Not many champions can use this well, but maybe someone like Kha'Zix, who goes in for the kill and then leaves, and then can, can in theory, re-enter the fight. My last note on... AD Assassin items is just Umbral Glaive in general. When it was broken, it had a 35 second cooldown. And with Ingenious Hunter, Max Tax, it can go down to 33. And the few champions that do consider going Umbral Glaive have a lot of easy ways to stack Ingenious Hunter. You have champions like Ash and Senna, who have global ults and can snag easy kill participation. And then the others are probably junglers who will be roaming the map anyway. AP items can be split into two groups, considering there's very specific build paths that can use this. The general build for most mages is like Ludens or Seraphs into Horizon Focus or Leandries into Death Cap or Crypt Bloom. And sure, if you're planning to go Leandries Death Cap, maybe you don't take the rune, but uh, otherwise, you have a lot to work with. Ludens pretty much gets a free Scorch from Ingenious, because one extra charge you wouldn't otherwise have is about 18 damage, except its cooldown is just the cooldown of your ability. If you play a champion like Orianna with a low cooldown ability that they can spam, you will see just how quickly that adds up on every Q. The other route in Seraphs gives you less downtime on the shield, which means a bit considering that this is one of the better shield lifeline items. I'm not going to argue here as to whether Horizon Focus or Kerplume have cooldowns people actually care about. Uh, if you do, I mean, they are reduced, so that's nice. But I'll, I will mention that uh, Zhonya's does exist, and I think everyone can agree that that cooldown very much does matter. This one really messes with people, because it's one of the most important cooldowns to track, and having it available when the enemy team thinks that you don't 
can really mess up a fight for them. Zhongnus has a 120 second based cooldown, and with maximum Ingenious Hunter stacks, it can go down to 80, which, uh, that's a very big window of enemy team not knowing whether you have it up or not. AP Assassin items are weird to gauge, so I'll talk about the cases where they will benefit. Lich Bane uptime is very important because the thing is that's an extra 45% AP ratio on a 1.5 second cooldown, which is being reduced. I talked about previously how 1.5 seconds versus 1 second is a little awkward to play around. And similar to Triforce, the math behind weaving in autos to get it procced more often is a bit tricky to think about and requires a lot of practice. Some champions, like Silas or Kali, can afford to space out spells. You can, you're can you probably going to be moving in between autos just to catch up. So it, realistically, you can get the benefits without having to think about it. There's also Protobelt and Storm Surge, which are nice to have, but again, it's kind of awkward to play about because the cooldowns are a little too long. So in the place of those items, I would like to bring people's attention to Shirelia's, which I think is a super underrated item on mages, but also AP Assassins, uh, just because the item is really cheap, has good stats, and you have a movement speed active, which is really good for roaming. Lastly, I want to talk about supports. We already have two classes of support covered in tanks and mages, but the third in enchanters I'll be talking about shortly. The thing is about support in general is that they will innately get a ton of benefit from item haste anyway, because the support item and trinkets both scale with item haste. All five support items benefit to varying degrees, but I want to talk about the synergy that I think is the strongest, which is with Dreammaker. I think enchanters are incredibly strong with Ingenious Hunter, as the reduced cooldown on this item guarantees that you will have the effect available for pretty much any of your heals and shields. Let's like Karma for example, which is a champ I personally play a lot. Karma had been skewed towards mage build to the buffs, but right now it doesn't really matter what you build because she's kind of weak regardless in the support role. She has one shield, which is, has a 10 second cooldown at rank 1. By the time she has Dreammaker, she probably will have enough ability haste for her shield cooldown to be lower than Dreammaker's. In fights, this is an ability you can cast off cooldown, meaning you might not have Dreammaker up for some of your shields unless you specifically wait for it. As you get more haste, this becomes more of an issue. Ingenious Hunter drastically helps bringing the cooldown low enough to near guarantee max uptime on Dreammaker unless you have ridiculous amounts of ability haste. Karma is also a great user of the powerful combo of Moonstone Redemption Locket, which is an underrated enchanter build that counters pretty much all engage and makes Karma herself tanky enough to be able to frontline and follow melee carries a little bit. You could pair that combo with something like Malignant Sorcerellia's first to capitalize on Karma's strong laning phase and then move into that core to have a stronger mid to late game. So that's about it. I hope it's a bit easier now to go out and try using this room for yourselves. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, please let me know in the comments. I've also been trying to stream a bit more frequently, both on YouTube and Twitch. I should be alive Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to stop by. Anyways, thanks for watching everyone.